is CNN News. And in with his great to concern uh, that former President Donald Trump was brazen mishandling White House documents. The Washington Post has new reporting on the records Trump took with him to Mar-a-Lago. The Post says some of the documents were clearly marked as classified, including some at the top secret level. This as we're also learning about potentially important evidence that's missing from the White House, from White House records obtained by the January 6th committee. Let's go right to CNN special correspondent, Jamie Gangel. Jamie, uh, what are you learning? Some important updates happening at this hour. What we've learned, Jim, is that there is a gap in the official records, the phone records for what was happening during the riot on January 6th. We know that Trump made calls before the riot. There were calls after 4 p.m., after he made the video telling the rioters to go home. So the question is, why do no calls show up during that period of time? Now, just to be clear, no one is suggesting that these official records were tampered with. So what are some possible answers? As you well know, Trump famously used a personal cell phone. Also, former administration officials have told us he routinely used other staffers' cell phones, sometimes his personal aide or Dan Scavino. The other thing that may have simply been true is he may not have been on a lot of calls during the riot. We know from other testimony to the committee that he appeared to be riveted watching the riot on TV, rewinding, and it may also be that there are more records to come from the National Archives. But, Jim, sources familiar with the investigation say that while they haven't drawn any final conclusions yet, this may raise the question, does the committee consider more seriously going after Trump's personal cell phone records, Jim? Absolutely, and trying to get some straight answers right. from the former president. Uh, Jamie, uh, they, they've hit a very big area that needs to be explored. Well, well, we would like to know what Trump was doing and not doing during the riot. Obviously, they also want to know, who was he talking to? What was he saying? We do know that he had that shouting match with Kevin McCarthy. Why isn't that in the records? We know he reached out to Senator Tuberville through Mike Lee's phone. Why isn't that in the records? I think what's important here, though, Jim, is this is yet another example of how the Trump White House worked. Despite security concerns, despite the Presidential Records Act, Trump flouted the rules, the norms, whether it was using personal cell phones or ripping up papers and flushing them down a toilet, as uh, Maggie Haberman from the New York Times is reporting. So a former White House official in the Trump White House described it to me this way when I asked about January 6th. He said Trump, quote, doesn't think the rules apply to him, and that was passed on to the staff around him, Jim. Yeah, there was a lot of flouting of the rules, Jamie. The question is whether any of that was illegal. Of course, we're going to stay on top of that. Jamie, Correct. stay with us. Uh, let's bring in CNN senior commentator and former Ohio Governor John Kasich, uh, CNN chief legal analyst Jeffrey Tubin. Uh, they're with us as well. Uh, Jeffrey, let me start with you first. Let's start with this new reporting from the Washington Post. I mean, this is getting serious. Uh, the documents recovered from uh, Trump's private residence were clearly labeled as classified at the top secret level. Uh, you know, this is, uh, this is getting beyond the level of flushing things down the toilet. This is a serious breach. Well, it, it, it's all serious, and all of it has one question, which is the issue of intent. Who did this and why? Because if this was done in the normal course of business, if it was just an oversight, a mistake, uh, a matter of habit, um, that's not a crime. That's not something law enforcement deals with. However, if any of this, whether it's flushing down the toilet, whether it's removing documents, whether it's hiding phone records, any of that, if that is done specifically with the intent to deprive a criminal or congressional investigation of relevant evidence, uh, investigators need to know who did it and why. And Governor Kasich, the, as you know, the top secret designation means that if those documents were released, it could cause grave damage to national security. So what, what's your reaction to this report? I mean, can you imagine removing the top secret documents from the White House? Well, people have been gotten in trouble for doing things like that, as we know, right. over the years. But perhaps, uh, Jim, that White House aide said it best. Trump just thinks he's just going to do what he wants to do. It's all about him. 
and these are the rules. He didn't care about the rules. And then what you get concerned about is that kind of that attitude that it filter into the staff where they just felt as though they couldn't do anything. And we had a lot of people leaving that administration when they saw what was going on. Uh, but when you're talking about top, top secret information, and there were times when I had to deal with it being on the, uh, the Armed Services Committee, it's a very, very serious matter. And any time it involved top secret information, there was an investigation to find out what exactly happened. And Jamie, uh, this comes on top of the very alarming reporting from Maggie Habers Haberman of the New York Times that former President Trump would apparently uh, flush documents down the toilet when he was in office. Uh, you know, there were other reports of him tearing things up when he was in office, throwing them in the trash. The staffers would have to go in. Or try oh, I guess this gets into the question now of whether he was just simply being careless or was he trying to cover things up? Look, I, it doesn't sound very careless. It sounds as if he was doing it on purpose. And one of the things you will well remember is uh, National Archives civil servants would go into the trash baskets when he would rip up documents, and they would carefully tape those back together. I'm assuming he was flushing these things down the toilet because he didn't want them taping it back together. But to Jeffrey Tubin's point about intent, what do we know? We know that in all of these cases, he's trying to circumvent the rules. We don't know why, but I would add one more thing. Will there be the political will to go after a former president? Will the Justice Department do that? Will the Biden White House want to do that? That's right. I mean, th that is the, the ultimate question, Jeffrey, because we're getting to the point where, at what point does this add up to something that the Justice Department has no choice but to do? Uh, the pre former president says this is no big deal, but when you look at all of this, the gaps in the call logs, top secret documents in Mar-a-Lago, uh, at what point does this amount to obstruction of justice? Well, that, that's a huge question, Jim. And, you know, I am not here to convict Donald Trump of anything. I don't know what the reason was. But when you add it all up, when you look at how many examples there appear to be of the president trying to cover his tracks, trying to keep documents from people who have the right to see them, it certainly calls out for an investigation by the Justice Department, though I, I'm certainly well short of saying that there needs to be a prosecution here. But how the Justice Department can simply shrug its shoulders and say, it's not my job, I, that, that's, that's really becoming very hard to, uh, hard to accept at this point. Governor Kasich, what do you think? Does there need to be a prosecution? It, well, I mean, look, first of all, you know, these are, this is reports. And I know that, uh, I don't know Maggie Haberman, but she's clearly a really good reporter. But it's just a report. So you can't get, get to the bottom of it. But look. Following Trump all these years with the way he did real estate, his taxes and everything else, there's, there's no surprise here. Uh, the question is, there's questions around what Jeff Tubin is saying, and uh, at the end of the day, that's why January 6th committee is so important. Regardless of what some Republicans say, that's some partisan exercise, you've got to get to the bottom of this, because January 6th is one of the darkest moments in, in our history. Absolutely. He, I used to call him the catch-me-if-you-can president when he was in office. Now he's the catch-me-if-you-can ex-president, I think. Uh, all right. Thanks to all of you. We appreciate that. Just ahead, President.